Right, we've made it to the Moss Esper marketplace and it seems that this is the first Stolwa site I've come to where people are actually using it to make money. I've been offered about five quad bike tours, uh, ride on a camel, here's another guy offering me a ride on a camel, Le Le Aisha. Uh, and people selling all sorts of Star Wars and non-Star Wars related stuff. This guy's just randomly following me for some reason, so that's good. But, uh, but yeah, this whole section might be recognisable to those of you that have seen the films. Whoa. <laughs> people woo -woo, doing donuts. There we go. The Moss Esper Marketplace. We made it to Nefta, now we're tracking northwards into the desert. Uh, there are three Star Wars filming scenes up here that I want to get to. Uh, two are Mos Espa, various parts of Mos Espa, uh, and then further east there's like a Sith landing site on a mesa that we want to get to. Um, yeah, so far it's not that adventurous. It's a paved road. There's definitely an encouraging sign when a VW Golf comes the other way through the desert. So something tells me that this uh, beautiful paved road probably won't run out before we get to the uh, Star Wars site, which is great news. It means it's actually accessible for tourists. So the road ran out about 500 meters before town and here we are coming in and it looks like we're not the only ones. The real world location of this place is in the Ediget Dunes, so we are north of Nefta. North on a very good road all the way here. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, there's a tourist all around me and a lot of people trying to sell me things. So you might recognize some locations here from both episode one and episode two. Uh, let me just talk you through some of the different scenes or some of the things that you might recognize here. Set construction was early May to late July 1997 and then filming ran all the way through until August that year. There were four distinct areas uh, that they filmed at, the first one being the marketplace which is dotted around here, I guess. Oh, and we can actually see that these are sets, these aren't actually locally made constructions, look at that. Yep, so we're now inside. <laughs> it's all kind of fiberglass, I think. Yeah, look, it's uh, with wire around it. So anyway, there's three months worth of construction to get this all done in 1997, and then they came and filmed in about four distinct locations. We had the marketplace, which I just showed you. We had the viewing platform. We had the crowd stand, and we had the starting grid, because this is another area um, dedicated to the story about the pod race. I think this is the Watto Shop main entrance. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Star Wars fans. You recognize this from the film? Explore some of the other sets. Oh dear. Yeah. Not in great condition. Let's wander around this way. Just a wall holding it up. Yeah, that definitely doesn't lead anywhere. And this one is being used for motorbike parking. Yeah. Oh, that one's in better condition. Even got wooden slats on the floor in there. Okay, so I've uh, managed to enlist the help of Nordin, who's gonna, <laughs> gonna assist me to head east without killing myself into that. Uh, apparently, this is also part of the 1997 set. I'm intrigued, because I, I don't have this as a GPS point, but apparently this is all, well, there was some set piece constructed here that's now been destroyed because the dune's gone over it. Um, this was 1997 when this would have been put together okay but the actual set section that i do have gps tagged is there so it's in the center there so let's drive back to that and see what we can see there so this is only about 500 meters out of um, town and this is the moss esper outskirts and the slave quarters backyard so we've got this 
beautiful vista out into the desert and we've got the massive dunes over there that people have driven up or down. I'm definitely not gonna be attempting that given that you can just go around them. Um, yeah, look at these windswept. This is a great location. I can see why they filmed here. And thus far, uh, touch woods, I haven't actually needed uh, to engage four by four at all. I mean, look, this is, this is pretty compacted. And as far as I can see, it's like that all the way around. We're only going a few kilometers, so it doesn't look like you have to drive over sand unless you absolutely want to. Um, could get tricky if it rained, but right now it's nice and dry. It's not too hot. Let's keep heading east and see if we can get there. Here are our first views of Shot El Kharsa. Welcome to the Star Wars filming site of Ong Jamal. Not quite as touristy as the place we just left, but look, it's still, we got dubious looking toilets and a place to sell you uh, some local tat, so that's good. And there it is, looking out over the salt flats. Now, this location was actually used for two separate uh, scenes in episode one, Phantom Menace. So it was used as a, it was used as a Sith landing site. And we also had it as a canyon turning site during the Moss Esper pod race sequence. So let's get a bit higher and see if we can actually work out what was shot where. Oh wow, look at that. So I don't know if you can see there, but that little kid uh, appeared with a rather upset looking fennec fox on a string or on a chain, asking if I wanted to pay for photos with it. So my answer was a polite no. So there's not gonna be any footage of a cute little fennec fox in this video, I'm afraid. Um, I don't really think we should be encouraging people to keep those wild animals in captivity. It'd be really cool to see one in the wild. And I've heard you can at Camp Zamella, which I'll be going to in a few more weeks. But yeah, not, not so keen on a captive one. Right, this is a better view. So, that's where we came from. Salt Flat is over there. There's on Gemmel, which apparently looks like a camel. Not sure I can see it. And here is the pass where we have the pod racers shooting through, I assume. And it's the Mesa to the south that's actually the one that, um, that was the Sith landing site. I guess it's that one. Yeah, that would make the most sense. So all of this section used for filming in episode one. I know this is dependent on conditions, but right now you don't need a four x four in order to come here. So it's it's basically tarmac from Nefta until the last kilometer um, before the marketplace. And then when you're heading, you're basically just skirting around the salt flat. You don't have to drive over any sand if you don't want to. It's all this compacted desert. So assuming it doesn't rain or there isn't a sandstorm that blows dunes across all of the tracks, you should be okay to drive in a, well, you could drive very slowly in a regular car. Uh, so yeah, don't let the tour operators tell you that you have to go in a massive expensive Land Cruiser. Um, you don't. And also you can get yourself a guide from back there to bring you over here. Um, but again, not really necessary, I don't think. I mean, I'll share some of the GPS tracks in the book and in this video. I, th I think it's pretty intuitive uh, what you need to do. You, there's, there's only a few options for turning and it's quite obvious which one you're supposed to take to keep skirting along the uh, salt flat. Right, let's head back and go on to our next site. Right, I'm gonna slightly retract what I said about not needing 4x4 on that route. Um, I think you need a vehicle with high clearance. I mean, I didn't engage 4x4 once for that whole journey, but yeah, you might get into a bit of trouble if you try that in like a high-end i10 or something. 